So this last section on systems of linear equations, we're going to be looking at particularly at solution sets of systems. Now in the first four videos, we looked at Gaussian elimination, the process of Gauss-Jordan elimination, if, and how to get solutions from there. So now what we're going to do is just look at what we get after Gaussian elimination and then see what the solution set will be. So we're not going to be doing any Gaussian elimination in this video. Those are in the previous videos. So before we go there, just some notation, some labels. When we do Gaussian elimination or Gauss-Jordan elimination, we end up with a system that can be in what we call row echelon form or reduced row echelon form. So these are just names. So row echelon form is if I've got my leading ones and zeros below it. So it's like an echelon, it's staggered. Now here's a row of zeros, that's not a problem. I just, that's what came out with the Gaussian elimination. So I don't have any more leading ones, but it's zeros below it. But if I've got my system to the point where I've got leading ones and zeros above and below it, then it's called reduced row echelon form. Now, I prefer to take them all to reduced row echelon form because that's just, I do that in the same step. So leading ones and zeros above and below. So those are just the names, row echelon and reduced row echelon. But let's look at solution sets. So firstly, if I'm giving you a matrix and I say this is an augmented matrix for a system of linear equations, that means that there was a system written in the form of what, whether I've got x, y, z, or x1, x2, x3, but there was a system of linear equations. I put it in augmented matrix, and this is what came out. Now, firstly, you've got to identify how many variables you have. This is an augmented matrix, so there'll be a column for x1, x2, x3, and x4. So if I had to write this as equations, and you don't always have to do it, but as we start, let's do that. After my Gaussian elimination, this is what I've got. So I've got an x1 plus 3x4 is equal to 2, x2 plus 2x4 is equal to 5, x3 plus 4x4 is equal to 1. So you'll notice we've got leading ones for x1, 2, x3, there's no leading one for x4. So x4 is my free variable. So let x4 be equal to, I'm just going to use t, where t is some real number. Then I can generate solutions for x1, 2, and 3 based on the value of x4. Because then x1 is then going to be equal to 2 minus 3t. x2 will be equal to 5 minus 2t. x3 will be equal to 1 minus 4t. So that is my infinite number of solutions. So if you pick t equal to 0, you can find a particular solution. If t is equal to 0... My solution set, not set, my solution is going to be for x1 is going to be 2, for x2 is going to be 5, for x3 is going to be 1, for x4 is going to be 0, because I chose t to get p0. So you can choose t to be any value to generate a particular solution. But your general solution set is the set of all possible solutions. So that's the set of all x1, x2 x3, x4s, given. Now, I can't list all the solutions because there's an infinite number of them, but there's definitely some restrictions. We know x1 is equal to 2 minus 3t, x2 is equal to 5 minus 2t, x3 is equal to 1 minus 4t, and x4 is equal to t. And you have to tell me t is some real number. So this is the solution set for the infinite number of solutions of this system. All right. So let's look at the next example. Again, I've done Gauss-Jordan elimination. This is my reduced row echelon form. I've got four rows. I've got three leading ones. Firstly, how many variables do I have? This is an augmented coefficient matrix. We're given that information. So it's x1, x2, and x3. So from here, I can see x1 is 5, x2 is minus 1, and x3 is 2. So what's with this row of zeros? All that means is... I was given too much information. The system has a unique solution, but one of the equations, equations was either a multiple of the other or just the sum of a the, one of them plus another a constant. So 
to get that fourth row of zeros, it's not a problem. It just means we've, we're given too much information. So we can get the solution here. We've got x1 is 5, x2 is minus 1, and x3 is 2. No problem with that. All right. So we've seen an example of an infinite number of solutions and a unique solution, even though it doesn't look like any of our previous examples. Let's look at the next one. Now I've done Gaussian elimination, and this is what I come up with. I've now got three rows. I've got two leading ones, and let's see what happens here. I've got two leading ones. This is an augmented system, so I've got x1, x2, x3. So if I had to write this, now I don't have a row of zeros. I've got a row here that looks a little bit weird. Let's see what it looks like if I write it as equations, and you'll see what comes up. This means x1 is equal to 3, x2 plus 4x1, I mean 4x3 is equal to minus 1. Nothing funny there. And then I've got 0 equal to 3. Now, there's the problem. Can 0 ever be equal to 3? No, 0 can't be equal to 3. This is a contradiction. 0 can't be 3. So this is a system of linear equations where I've got a, with Gaussian elimination, I've got a contradiction coming out telling me 0 is equal to 3. So this system has no solution. So this is to watch out for, for a system with no solution, something in the line of a contradiction, whether it's 0 is equal to 3 or some other number. Whereas I'm going back to the previous page, I had a row of zeros. That was not a problem. That was just saying 0 is equal to 0, which isn't a problem. But if I tell you 0 is equal to 3, there is a problem. That doesn't work. So that system has no solution. So these are the three types of solutions you come up with. So irrespective of the size of your system, using Gauss-Jordan elimination, seeing where you can find leading ones, and then you can get your solution out of there. Either a unique solution, an infinite number of solutions, or no solution, as in this case. So now I just want to touch on one special set of linear equations, and those are the homogeneous system of linear equations. So please take note. If I had a, row of a column of zeros in my augmented matrix, no matter how I add and subtract those row operations, I'll always get a zero. So keep that in mind. Secondly, if I look at a system of equations like that, there's already one solution. There will always be a solution. And that one possible solution is where x1, x2, x3 is equal to the trivial solution, 0, 0, 0. Because substituting 0 into place of x1, x2, x3 will always satisfy a homogeneous system. Yet again, that's a system where I've got zeros on the right-hand side. So there's a homogeneous system. So there will never, ever be a case that a homogeneous system has no solutions. Always at least one solution. Now, the question is, when will it have more than one solution? And that will be the case where I have free variables. If I've got three leading ones after Gaussian elimination for this system, I will have only one solution, and that's the trivial solution. But if I get the case where these are n unknowns and I only have r, which is obviously less than n then, non-zero rows, I can only get leading ones in r of them, then I will have n minus r free variables. And we saw earlier how to deal with the free variables to generate an infinite number of solutions. So just again, System of a, a homogeneous linear system will always have at least one solution, the trivial solution, but it could have more. It will never have no solutions. All right, and then we can make it even narrower that if I've got a homogeneous system with more unknowns than equations, so in this is a case I've got three unknowns and only two equations, that one will have infinite bending solutions. Like we said, it can never have no solution. There's always the trivial one. But in this case, I've got more equations than unknowns, so I will have infinitely many solutions. So you will see for this one, if you do Gaussian elimination, you can't get three leading ones because there's not enough rows in my matrix. So this will generate infinite number of solutions. So that's looking at the solutions of systems of linear equations. Now, we've only used one method to find solutions. There's two other methods we're going to be looking at to find solutions to systems of linear equations, and that's the inverse matrix method, which is still coming, and using Kramer's rule. So look out for those. There are more methods to find solutions to systems of linear equations. 
using Gaussian elimination is one of them.